In this video, I compare the base I.O. dynamic range between the Nikon Z6 and Z6 III. I accomplish this by setting up a test scene, which I first expose at a normal exposure, then I progressively underexpose it in one-stop increments by doubling the shutter speed, until I arrive at a full 10 stops of underexposure for the final image. I then pull all the raw files into Photoshop and adjust the exposure and post so that they all have the same output brightness. This is akin to how you might shoot a high dynamic range scene, where you have to expose for the highlight, which in turn is going to underexpose the other elements of the image, which you then need to boost and post. We'll start with the first file, which is zero stops of underexposure. I've set up all these documents so that the images from both cameras are set up as layers so we can selectively choose which layer is visible and compare the noise between the two. So this is the full view first, and fit to zoom so you can see the entire image. Then I'll zoom in at the various parts of the images so we can see where the differences might lie. I'll be focusing a lot within this dark area here that I've set up. That's where the noise difference is going to be most apparent between the cameras. So here, this is the Z6 III, and then this is the Z6. Z6 III, Z6. No noticeable differences whatsoever, which is expected at base ISO 100 with zero stops of underexposure. So again, this is the Z6 III, Z6, Z6 III, Z6. All right, so now we'll move on to one stop of underexposure. And to show you what this image looks like before and after, I'll go ahead and double click the smart layer so you can see what the ACR adjustment is. So the image on the left is the original raw file. The image on the right is the that raw file that's been one stop underexposed adjusted by one stop in post. So again, it matches the output brightness of the original normally exposed image. So we'll zoom in on the shadow part of the image. This is the Z6 III, Z6, Z6 III, Z6. No differences noticeable whatsoever. And then we'll look at some of these color panels so you can see at a higher exposure. No noticeable difference. Now we'll move on to two stops of underexposure. Left is the original raw file, right is exposed two stops in post, higher. Zoom in on the shadows. Z6 III, Z6. Now we'll move on to three stops of underexposure. Here's what that looks like. Original on the left, exposed three stops higher on the right. So you can see here we're starting to get darker and darker within the full image, particularly in the shadows. Go ahead and zoom in on the deep shadows here. Z6 III, Z6. There you can see uh, one stuck pixel there on the Z6, but we'll go ahead and ignore that. Not really seeing any difference yet. We'll go ahead and pan over to the color panels. Let's move on to four stops of underexposure. Here's what that looks like before and after. Now you can start to see there's a lot more noise because again, we're boosting now four stops of exposure and post. So we're getting deeper and deeper into the shadows. Z6 III, Z6. Now you can start to see already there is a difference in noise. Let me go ahead and zoom a little further so it's visible in the YouTube video. So again, Z6 III has noticeably more noise in the shadows versus the Z6, which indicates it has lower base I.O. dynamic range than the Z6. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the higher exposure part of the image. Let me zoom in a little bit more. So you can see on these color patches, you're not seeing hardly any difference because they're, they're exposed higher, but you can start to see the difference in on the borders in between them, which are a darker part of the image, closer match to the shadow part that I first zoom in on. All right, so that's four stops of underexposure. This is five stops. Now we're almost entering complete darkness. This might be where the threshold might want to not underexpose below because most cameras, no matter how good their dynamic range is, your overall noise is going to be too great to make the photo usable. But we'll go ahead and keep comparing again just so that we can see the full extent of the differences between the cameras.
Let's go ahead and zoom in on shadow. And again, this is the Z63. Z6. Z63. Z6. More noise on the Z63 than the Z6. But again, this is at five stops of underexposure, so this may not be significant for you because you may not be pushing this your shadows this much. Let's go ahead and look at some of the higher exposed part of the areas. Still not seeing much difference in the higher tones on the uh, the red and the green. Here you can start to see in the blue channel, which is typically the darkest of the channels, that's the Z6, Z6-3. Definitely more noise starting to be apparent, even on this higher exposed patch. All right, moving further, we're going to go to six stops of underexposure. Here's what that looks like. ACR and Photoshop only let you adjust by five stops for the entire exposure. So to accomplish more than five, I then started using exposure brushes. So there's this has one exposure brush, which itself is set to one stop. So this is one stop of exposure adjustment on the brush, in addition to the five stops done on the entire image. So that's how I accomplished the six stops of exposure adjustment in post. So you can see here, even zoomed out, you can start to see the entire image has more noise. The color tint is starting to develop into the image. Go ahead and zoom in on the deep shadows. We'll pan over to the color panels. So now you're starting to see, even in the higher exposed part of the areas, more noticeable noise on the Z63 image versus the Z6. And we'll even go to the higher exposed area. So this is the widest part, this is the widest patch of the color checker. The noise difference within the brightest two patches is not really apparent, but as you go deeper, again, that's six stops of underexposure. Now this is seven stops, the noise getting progressively worse, image becoming less and less usable overall. Now we're into the realm of complete darkness. So this is a boosted seven stops in post. The difference in dynamic range between two cameras is going to be most apparent within the deeper shadows at the most underexposure, and then you can work yourself backwards to see how that might affect you in more normal exposures. Pan over to the color checker. So now we're starting to see the difference even within the second brightest panel. This is eight stops of underexposure. We don't even need to really zoom in anymore because the noise difference is going to be so obvious. Now you're starting to see the difference even in the brightest patch. Here's the overall image, Z63, Z6. You can see both have a color tint. The actual the Z6 has a bit more tint, more magenta tint than the Z63. So that's a, one advantage for the Z63. The Z63 definitely has more overall noise. So that's eight stops of underexposure. Nine stops. Full image. Then we'll be at the final image, a full 10 stops of underexposure. ACR only lets you do five stops. So this one's going to have an exposure adjustment brush. Actually, two of them, because each of these is limited to four stops. So one exposure brush is set to one stop of exposure boost, and the other one's set to 
four stops. So four plus one is five stops of adjustment with the exposure brushes, and then an additional five stops for the overall image. Here, the image is almost completely unrecognizable. Full image. Again, right around 4 EV, 3 EV is where we started to see the difference. If I go back to the 4 EV image, this is four stops of underexposure, Z63. If I zoom in really close, Z6, Z63, Z6. So this is maybe close to where you might want to not boost any further on the Z63. Five stops. So maybe seven or six or seven EV is well beyond where you would normally go for both cameras. Maybe six or seven is where you'd go for the Z6 and maybe five or so on the Z6 III. It's gonna to be to your taste and how you expose your photos and what you consider acceptable noise and how much of that noise you can maybe reduce in post. This is just to show you what the raw sensor capability is. So you can use that as your baseline.